Okay, welcome back. In this next um, collection of videos, I'm going to explain how we can put the ideas of current, voltage and resistance together to start analysing complete circuits. So let's just summarise the key ideas. Firstly, current. We learned about current. And that's, the, that's equal to the, fl the amount of coulombs flowing in a circuit per second. So that's measured in coulombs per second, which is equal to one amp. Voltage um, or potential difference are both a measure of the amount of energy or the difference in energy um, per coulomb of charge. So that's measured in joules per coulomb and that's measured and one joule per coulomb is one volt and finally the idea of resistance which is measured in ohms Okay, now there are a couple of symbols I'm going to introduce. And we'll go to a different colour for this. Current has the symbol I, capital I, if we're talking about DC current, which is unusual, but that's what it is. So whenever you see the I, it's talking about current. Voltage has the symbol V. Resistance has the symbol R. The units, as we said, were the amp, abbreviated to A, volts, V, and ohms, omega. So they are the three units in which these are measured. And um, the next thing I would like to do is to start is to just introduce some of the key diagrammatic symbols that you'll be using when analysing circuits. We've already introduced the battery um, or the power supply so that would be something like this or it could also be something like this. In both cases the long line represents the positive side, the shorter line which is actually normally thicker as well represents the negative side. Okay, so that's a battery or a power source. And that will not often have or nearly always have some sort of a voltage rating next to it, telling you how much energy is given to each coulomb of charge as it passes through the battery. Other symbols that we need to be aware of, <coughs> pardon me, are the resistor. Now, a resistor is actually a component that we can put in a circuit to try to slow down or reduce the current flowing through that part of the circuit. A resistor can be simply represented as a rectangle like this. So there's a resistor, and it will often have some value. It might be 200 ohms, telling you that's a 200 ohm resistor. Another symbol for resistor is this. and it might have 500 above it, indicating that it's a 500 ohm resistor. So they are symbols for resistance, or resistant, resistors. Um, sometimes globes are used in circuits, and symbols for globes are either a circle with a cross in it, or something like that. They are how globes are represented. We can also represent things like switches. A switch is often represented like this. And in either this or like this, 
Now there's two states to switch can be in. Um, when, the, when the gate is open, there's no contact between here and here, which means no current will flow. So this is what's called an, an open switch. This is an open switch, which basically means it's turned off, no current can flow. So that's in the off position. This is known as a closed switch, which means it's now on, current can now flow. The other key symbols we need to be aware of are the meters that we will be using or talking about. They are the voltmeter. Now, a voltmeter is always placed such that it is actually going to compare two different points in a circuit. Remember, a voltmeter will nearly always be used to compare two different points in a circuit somewhere between point A and point B. So it'll be connected, each of the probes will be connected to different points in the circuit and this will be measuring the difference in the in the voltage between those two points. So that's a voltmeter. On the other hand, and a meter that measures current Because it's like a turnstile, it actually has to count the electrons as they pass through it, it will always be in line with the circuit. So an ammeter will be placed in the circuit itself to measure the electrons as they pass through it. So one thing to always be aware of, voltmeters are always placed so that they're not actually in the circuit, their, their probes are connected to two different points of the circuit, but they're not actually embedded in the circuit. A nanometer, on the other hand, is always placed in the actual circuit itself, so the electrons have to pass through it to measure the number or count those electrons as they pass through. This is an am, this is an ammeter. So voltmeters measure potential difference. Ammeters measure current. And um, they're pretty much the symbols we're going to be using at this stage. Okay, so we'll clear that and move on. So if we now want to project, perhaps draw a circuit like this, and I'll make it... Oops, try it again. Sorry about that. Here's our right. Here's our battery. I shall keep it a little bit simpler stage. This is a, let's say it's a 12 volt battery. Here is a 20 ohm resistor and here's another 20 ohm resistor. So they're identical resistors. So what can we say about this circuit? Well, actually, before we do that, I'm going to place an ammeter in there. So I'm going to place an ammeter, say, in there. Now, remember, the ammeter has to be placed in the circuit itself. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's placed here or over here. Um, it will always, if it's one single circuit, it should be the same everywhere. So, in other words, if this was a pipe, a single circuit of water flowing in a pipe, no matter where you placed your ammeter, in the circuit, it should register the same flow because the same amount of water must be flowing everywhere in the pipe. Otherwise, it would be building up in one place and there'll be no water in another part of the circuit, which doesn't happen. And let's say I also want to measure the voltage across each of those resistors. So I'll place a voltmeter across that resistor. 
and another voltmeter across that resistor. Okay, so let's see what's going to happen to our current. So remember, this is the positive side of the battery, this is the negative side of the battery. So the first thing we want to establish is which way is the direction of current. Well, remember, current is always the way that a positive charge would flow. So positive charge would always flow out of the positive end of the battery and into the negative. So this is the direction of current. On the other hand, electrons actually will flow out of the negative side of the battery and into the positive end. So this is the direction of the electron flow. Okay. Now, remember we said, firstly, let's look at our battery. Remember we said that the voltage of the battery tells us how many joules of energy each coulomb get as it passes out of the battery. Well, because this is a 12 volt battery, that tells us that each joule, each, sorry, each coulomb of charge of electrons receives 12 joules of energy. So as these coulombs of electrons come out of our battery, here they come, each, each of those is a coulomb. So each of those represents 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons. So that is one coulomb of electrons. Okay, so as these coulombs fly around the circuit, as they move around the circuit in this direction, that electrical energy that they're carrying is going to be transferred into heat. Now, resistors are just like light globes, except they don't produce any light. Resistors just convert electrical energy into heat. Now, because these resistors are identical, that means that they both, the, the electrons as they flow through are going to use the same amount of energy to pass through this resistor as they do to this one. Now remember we said that by the time the electrons return to the battery, they must have used up all of their, all of their energy, which means as they return, they must have zero joules of energy. As they come out, each coulomb has 12 joules of energy. When they return, they'll have zero. So, that would tell us then that because they're going to use, they have to use all their energy to get around the circuit, and each of these resistors will offer the same resistance, and therefore the electrons are going to use the same amount of energy to get through each, then half of the energy will be used at this resistor, and as the electrons flow through from one resistor to the next one, then the remaining energy will be used to get through this resistor. So each coulomb, as it passes through this, this resistor, will use six joules of energy, and then they'll use six joules of energy to get through this resistor. So the voltage, or the potential difference across each of those, will be six volts. Notice that six plus six adds up to the original 12 volts. Okay, so that's another thing we didn't actually talk about. We'll talk about it now. The key idea also of a, of a resistor is that because it actually it makes it harder for the electrons to pass through it, they use more energy to get through. So the greater the resistance, the greater the resistance of the resistor, the more energy it, the electrons use up to get through it. Think of it, if we go back to our lunar park analogy, there are some rides that are expensive and some rides that are cheap. Um, so the, the greater the resistance, the more expensive the ride, the more money you have to pay to go on it.
So the more energy the coulombs of charge have to pay to be able to pass through it. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to introduce one of the very, very important formulas in electricity. It's called Ohm's Law. And Ohm's Law is a relationship that connects current, voltage, and resistance. As a matter of fact, Ohm's Law is V equals I times R. Very simple rule. V equals IR. Now that means that we can actually start calculating the currents and the voltages and the resistances in circuits. Voltage equals current times resistance. So if we actually did a bit of a calculation here, I'll just change colour for a sec. Let's say for a moment we want to work out the current, the actual value of the current coming out of our battery. What is the actual current coming out of the battery? That's I. Well, we could use Ohm's law to work this out. Now, before we can use Ohm's law, we need to be aware there are two versions of Ohm's law. There's the global version, and then there's the local version. The global and local. If we're talking about things that relate to the whole circuit, the whole circuit, for example, the current that's coming out of the battery that's feeding the whole circuit, or the voltage feeding the whole circuit, or the total resistance of the whole circuit. If we're talking about anything to do with the whole circuit, then we use the global version of Ohm's law. And in the global version of Ohm's law, V is the voltage of the battery. It's the battery voltage. I is the current coming out of the battery. And R is the total resistance of the circuit. Okay, so in this case, if we want to work out the current coming out of the battery, which is I, we want to work out I, all we need to know is what V and R are. V and R, yep. So we know that V, if we're talking about the global version, V is the voltage of the battery, well we know that, V equals 12. R is the total resistance of the circuit, well, the total resistance, resistance of the circuit is 20 plus 20, which is 40. So the total voltage feeding the circuit is 12 volts. The total resistance of the circuit is 40 ohms. What is the current coming out of the battery? Well, that is simply, we'd rearrange this relationship, I equals V over R, which is 12 over 40. And you can work that as a decimal. And I'll probably do that quickly here. 12 over 40 is 0.3. There you go. So that would be a current of 0.3 amps that's flowing out of the battery. Okay, in our next in our next video we're going to look at um, some more detailed examples and specifically look how we can use the local version of Ohm's law to do more challenging problems. Okay, thank you.